This is a test of the Nuvicon camera. This is the day before Labor Day. We're going to do a shoot at the Joyous Lake. This is a test for record and playback. likes to eat here very much. The name of this restaurant is Joyous Lake Woodstock and my little brother's name is Sam. My name is Three. My friend's name is Zoe and my father's name is Ronald. Always 
Pesic is there. Present talent every night of the week. Huh? I was out presenting every night of the week. Belinda County every night. Yeah, there's something happening here all the time. Yeah, I know. So you just. I didn't know he didn't have it. No, I have come into it. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. You haven't noticed this one either, too. I didn't notice it. It's poor today. Sam, come here, kid. I want you over here. Um, Dad? I don't know, maybe it's the right time to ask, but how do we work? That's the real world. It's not the right time to ask. Oh, well, going off work in about an hour. For the rest of the weekend? No. Yeah, about tonight. You're not going to be here tonight? No. I worked it out with CC already. And after I paid everyone off, well, before I paid everyone off, about 50 bucks. And you're going to go to sleep tonight and not make another 50? I have to. I have an early morning appointment. Oh, you're nuts. Yeah, that was crazy. Maybe, but <laughs> really what? Not crazy, not crazy. Anyway. Well, uh, then you just uh, take a movie the rail. Or leave uh, leave uh, a, a thing of your hours. Okay. And I'll get so, you the money. How many kids? Before you go. Oh, before you go. Okay. Say it. All right. So Jeffrey, what is it that? What is this? A microphone? Oh, actually, a place <laughs> where. People dance. What is it? A discotheque. And you're going to be a discotheque someday? Well, this weekend, the restaurant is going to turn into a discotheque. Does that mean all the tables are going to come out? I don't know. That's my daddy. Okay, 50. 50. It's really. I'm 50, right. Daddy. You get it. You An like answer? Like You'd be sorry for that. Why? Because then uh, they'll be gunished. On the horizon. Who was your party last night? This guy? is the hinge. You're in serious trouble. My party? I didn't have a party. Somebody else had a party. Joe and Sandy, the people who used Stonewall? Yeah. Well, I don't know who they are. I had a party. Me and Leon. Uh, yeah, Leon didn't make his reservation yet. Cancel. I'm so sorry. Mean the tables are gonna go away? This is just a little uh, a little piece of film that I want for my family, my daughter three and Sam, and my wife Valma and my daughter Laura, and for me, for like ten years from now, we're all gonna look at it twenty years from now. So we can remember what the joyous lake looks like and what it's like before Daddy makes a renovation this weekend. Uh, it's just started as a health food restaurant, evolved into a nightclub and a restaurant, and now it's evolving into a club, a dance hall, and a little light food. What I want you to do now, Jeffrey, for me, Jeffrey is the guy who's filming this, so we can remember 20 years from now. Bart! Bart! It's like Fernwood tonight. <laughs> well, what Bart's going to do is just going to take some shots of the room, just so we see what the room looks like before we take it apart and we won't remember what it looks like anymore. So it's like really nice and it's all been hand built by a lot of Woodstock craftsmen including myself. Uh, everything here is from Woodstock. The, the, the walls are made out of an old barn that we tore down. The tables, the chairs all come from the area. Uh, all the little artifacts, the stained glass, things like that, they're all from very old houses and old hotels around here. Yeah, and, and what? Look at the camera when you talk. And you got anything to say? You've been having fun at this place? I've been having a lot of fun coming to my I've been having a lot of fun coming to my daddy's restaurant for for seven years. Seven years. Since I was a little baby and I grew up in the joyous life. And you? Me and Alright. You have fun? Yeah, me and Frank. Have fun? Mm. Yeah, alright. Now let's let mommy talk. Uh, and mommy who uh, was the, really the heart of the place, we all know that. Now she's retired with her with her crew here and uh, she'll she'll have a word to say. Hold on a second. I love my gang. You love your gang. <laughs> uh -huh. And Laura, you got something to say? Huh? No. Alright. Mm -hmm. Laura uh, has, doesn't have much to say. All right, Bart, 
So if you take it from here, guy, and just like do a like an uh, architectural uh, rendering of my joint before I rip it apart, I would sincerely appreciate it. Tell me some things that have happened to you over the seven years that have made this all worthwhile. My family. Yeah. What's happened? I mean, it's like been a tremendous experience running a joint, you know, with. Uh, no, no. This is our first place. Fear, fear. Fear motivate us. <laughs> we had no money and we had to do something. The only thing we knew how to do was cook. Cook and do carpentry work, so we did it. Fear motivated us, and fear has motivated us right down the line. Make sure. Oh, no, it's okay. Go ahead, guy. This is for the BBC, you know? Uh, I like that. So we, uh, we cooked, and my wife uh, cooks really great food, and uh, she baked, and we did everything, and everybody loved it, and everybody ate here, and, you know. We fed the millions, you know. If you, were gonna, uh, if you were in the same position today, could you do this the same way? You never, did? never, Why? never again. Uh, running a restaurant uh, someday, uh, if you ever do it, you'll find out. Running a restaurant busts your hump. You see, once your so you know, your hump is busted. Once your hump is busted, it's busted. It's so over. You're looking at a you're looking at a, a person with a busted hump. Yes. This is a, well, we're going to have a little bit, it's going to be a little lighter in area, you know what I mean? It's going to be much lighter on the food thing, and uh, much heavier on the entertainment, and the good times and the dancing, which is not a hump buster. There's a difference. So uh, take a look at yourself seven years from now. What do you expect? Uh, gray hair, probably another kid, uh, and uh, maybe a movie offer or something like that, you know? What? Movie offer. I, I am going to go into movies. Yes, yes, as an actor, director, producer, and manager. Yes, I intend to uh, cover that. Yeah. That and uh, ceramic tiles. So you figure that as you get older, you want to get into more sedentary kind of work? Sedentary? No, no, movies. I want to do, uh, you know, I'll be running in movies and things like that, running around. No, sedentary, no. Ceramic tiles, yeah, that's sedentary. Music. Has many great things happened here musically in terms of the entertainment you've had here all over the years? Yeah. Last night something great happened here. We had Stuff playing here, one of the best groups in the country today. Of course, we got to understand we're going to be looking at this tape 20 years from now. So Stuff by that time will probably be all grandfathers. But right now, uh, they're one of the hottest groups in the country. They played here last night, Labor Day weekend, together with Dave Sanborn. It's a great night. We've had all the greats play here, Paul Butterfield and Taj Mahal and Bonnie Raitt and, uh, and uh, Thad Russell and Mel Lewis and Maria Muldar and, and uh, John Sebastian and David Brownberg and James Cotton and she was so many people. Who else? And Richie Havens and Dave Mason and the Point the Sisters and uh, Johnny Winter and Edgar Winter, Winter and... My God, everybody's played here. We can't top it anymore, Bart. You understand? That's over now. We can't. Uh, this the situation can't go any further. What's the most difficult part of running a restaurant? <laughs> Being there every day and making sure that every meal is perfect. That's the hardest thing about running a restaurant. You can't uh, you can't serve 500 good meals and then one shitty meal because that belongs to that person and they never come back and they tell all their friends and it's a terrible thing. Every meal has to be great and that's too much pressure. They say in the mid-70s that it's real hard to find good help. Do you find that? No, I've had great help working here. Great help, great people. Everybody works here. It's fabulous. And we've been very lucky. It's been more of a family than a joint. You know. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, boy. Okay. okay. Now, what's your voice? Valma. Val Mayor Maria Luz Bustamante by a Marians. No. No. Just on her. I would have a great time. Let me go. What's the slice of art? It's going to change now. You, you told me so it's going to be radically different. You just told me about that. Oh, that's just for me. That was just me speaking. You know. Food's going to change. It's not going to be so heavy on food, like I say. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a very beautiful place to come to, to to spend time in, to listen to nice music, 
to be in a nice atmosphere, a nice environment, to be involved with. There's a lot of plans, a lot of plants, a lot of pretty people, a lot of nice music, light food, and uh, and a place you'll be able to dance. Make life easier, you know, for me and for the whole family. Yeah. Uh, you guys start shooting. Tell me when you're ready to roll. You got the mic. You ready to roll? All right, so uh, in with the whole thing, we can't uh, uh, forget the biggest kid of all. That's my daughter, Valerie. She's um, 1977 now, so she's a child, 22. We're not going to look at this for 20 years, though, Valerie. So by the time not? we look at it, you're going to be 42 years really? old. Really? Oh, far out. Far out. I just want to say that this is the end of an era at the Joyous Lake, and I'm glad that I was able to be a part of it and help out as much as I could because I love the lake, and it will always be a Woodstock institution. Look at this, man, a Woodstock institution. It is an institution, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bart, let's take a look. Let me, let's take a look at these railings, you know, yeah. while you're shooting. It's like a, like a nicely innovative thing. It's uh, all made out of bent plywood and stuff like that. Me and my friend Richie Fusco, we built them. And I think they're very lovely to look at. And they uh, served as a, a barrier between uh, the bar and the restaurant part of the room. Took us five weeks working day and night to do it. A lot of nice little detail work. Come on over here, I'll show you some of the detail work. You take a look over here. Nice little curves over here. Yeah, catch this over here, Bart. See? Nice little turns in the wood. Nice detail work down here. Come here, I'll show you something down here. All these bar stools, by the way, were handmade by uh, a Woodstock artisan. Uh, tops are made out of local oak. The bar itself, the whole bar, if you can see it, came uh, see wrong. Right. Uh, baby, don't drive carefully, huh? Right. All right. The bar comes from like Lexington, New York. It's from an old stagecoach inn that uh, you know the guys used to drive in the stagecoach and walk up to the bar and get a drink. Turn of the century, probably 1890, 1900. It's all cherry and chestnut, walnut. The back bar, the stained glass back bar, that's up above the bar. Came from the Grand Hotel up in Tannersville. Very old, also turn of the century, very beautiful. We took it out of the hotel. Uh, the day that the hotel burned down that night, the owners had called me during the day and told me to come and get the back bar. And uh, I've always wondered how they knew the hotel was going to burn down that night, but they did know it somehow. And now all these, um, you see the wall plaques up here, Bart? I don't know if you can get to see them behind you on the stage. You swing around. Those zodiac signs up there, I don't know if you can get them. You shooting? All those zodiac panels, they come out of the Brooklyn Fox Theater. Uh, it was a great movie theater in Brooklyn where I used to go and smooch when I was a kid. And they were tearing it down. I stopped off there one day and picked up all those 12 zodiac panels. These uh, corbels that are up on the posts, they come from a mansion out in uh, the Hamptons, I think, that was owned by John Quincy Adams years ago. And they were tearing down the building, and we got those beautiful uh, hand-carved corbels from the building. I took them here. Even these exit signs, the exit signs that are above the door, I don't know how clear it is for you to see them. But uh, they're all out of brass. They're very old, also 1920s, early 30s. They're also from the Brooklyn Fox Theater. Very beautiful pieces. Um, let me see what else I can tell you, my man. You come over here and take a little shot of this water fountain. It was one of my always one of my favorite water fountains. Come from a uh, Bickford's uh, cafeteria in Brooklyn, and uh, what a really a great example of uh, Art Deco water fountain. Come over here, Bart, and take a, a flat-on look at it. But you can blow it if you want to. Dad, Dad, he loves me. This motherfucking doesn't work, child. Daddy, you see. Child. Wearing an ivory hand-carved ohm from Tibet. It's a wart you're looking at. Tibet. This is my daddy's ohm. It's very beautiful. Your daddy's own ohm. You can just check this out. This little hand-carved piece of ivory from Tibet. Gentleman has not taken it off of his body in 300 years. Don't try not to get the wart. 
Oh. Yeah, shoot, there's a what involved in this photograph here. I just, I just no, we don't want to get. That yeah. The joy is late. Please get lost with your kids so we can get the water fountain. All right. Deco water fountain, very, very lovely piece. Be proud of. It's going to go the way of all flesh. Tomorrow it will be ripped out of the wall. Here's an angle that I loved always. Come over here, Bart. Let's take a look at this angle over here. Okay. Is it rolling now? So in other words, you don't have to hold the button, right? All right, this is just a nice little angle I want to catch. The uh, stained glass window that's above it and the angle on the uh, railing, the way it came in. I just always like that with the water fountain here. It's a nice touch, I think, of the place. All right? That's for good luck. Oh, that's still rolling. I'm not open. I'm here for my health. No, I'm here. What do you mean, Woodstock? So this whole thing over here, we, we can shoot up here. Uh, these pictures up here that are on the wall behind you, like to pick a lot of nice nights that were here at the lake, not all of them by a long shot. We try to get some nice shots of some things that happen. The Massacre Nights and the Paul Butterfield Nights and uh, this is Orleans and they were starting and Martha Velez and just, I don't know, all the people that have been here. The pictures, I guess, speak for themselves. They were all really nice memories of uh, nice evenings and time spent at the Joyous Lake. A lot of fun, a lot of people, a lot of good music, a lot of partying. Running the Joyous Lake is like having uh, 150 people over at your house every night and having a big party. Feeding them all, making sure everybody has something to drink, making sure everybody's happy. Uh, that kind of thing. It's quite an experience, I'll tell you that. And it's been going on for eight years now, five, six, seven nights a week. And uh, try it sometime, you'll see. I want to go into the kitchen now with you, Bart, and take a look and see what that looks like, because uh, that's really uh, has been a very, very wonderful thing and a very, very wonderful experience for me cooking in here. It's like cooking in the galley of a ship. Come on, take a look. I'll show you. You got the fish there? I just want to show it to you because it's uh, part of the detail from also from the Brooklyn Fox Theater. One time there was like 5,000 feet of all cast iron fish like that. There were railings around the place. We tried to get them out of there and try to buy them from the guy, but he wouldn't sell them to us. And the next day, he bulldozed them all underground. Hard to believe. 5,000 running feet of beautiful cast iron underwater flora and fauna. The door is a beautiful piece, too. Turn of the century, etched glass, really beautiful. It comes from a local house in Kingston, also done by local artisans and people up here. Old etching technique that's not being done anymore. We were very proud of it. We put it here at the entrance door. I like this point of view also, the place. You just swing around, we'll catch that point of view. You get the whole room, and you get the uh, stage and uh, the whole way that's set up now. And the little porch out there, all the windows, I'm sure if you shoot, uh, that's Gary, the, uh, the bartender who was just by Mitzvah last night. He, on Labor Day weekend, Saturday night, Gary was forced to take over the bar by himself, and he was at the time a third man on a totem pole. He moved up to top man at the bar. That's a hard chore to do. All right, we're rolling. So now we're walking in underneath the sound booth. Walking in underneath the sound booth now. Sound booth is right over your head. You walk in, you swing around, you'll see that the uh, sound booth is up there and behind you. Just keep coming towards me and then you can turn around, you'll see it. See? Right up there. <laughs> That's the sound booth up there. And it was built over the salad bar. And come here, here's where we make our salads, right here. They all come out of here. You come back this way. And you come back into the kitchen. Well, I'll take the french fries out they're burning. I'll put them over here. Now, that's what the kitchen looks like. Here's three bowls of uh, famous hot chili going out. Homemade. Nice baked potatoes. 
Nice little French tile. Hold on a second, I'll be right back. It's a phone call for me. Best damn French fries in the neighborhood. Why don't you pop one in my mouth and let me see for myself? Hey, they're really hot though. These are the hot, right? What's your sign of the zodiac? Leo. Leo! I'm Libra on the Scorpio cuss. <laughs> Toilets Lake Westmount has the best French fries in the world. I have to take my orders out now. We'll see you later. Okay, so are you rolling now with this film? All right, so swing around. I'll show you our prep room. So Bart, come on in. This is this is the preparation room. Funky as it is, this is it. This is where we prepare the food. You come in here. There's a walk-in box over here. All the food is kept cold, right? See it? So we're able to get all, keep all of our food in there. Keep it cold, and it's really convenient to the rest of the restaurant to be able to get it. Right, we come down this way. We're in the kitchen. Take a nice long shot of, of all the stuff and the way it is so we can see it because, like I say, in a few more days, I'm going to be here anymore. Very tight little kitchen. Been acclaimed by a lot of people. George Lang, who was the head chef the Four Seasons for years, couldn't believe the amount of food we put out in the kitchen this size and how closely it was built. You take a look over here, if you look at it with the camera real close, you see that there's like a half an inch in between everything here. There's no space, there's no room, but we make do with it. Seeing everything is built to precision, built to size. Puts out a lot of food, two, three hundred dinners you can put out in a night here. And this is the dishwashing room. That's been called the uh, scourge of the universe by every dishwasher that's ever worked here. It's a horrible place to work. It's worse than Siberian salt mines. People have come out of here raving mad after spending one night in here, and I can't blame them. Uh, all I did was build it and design it for them. Uh, however, I can't take responsibility. Any, no, not anymore. A lot of people uh, have gone crazy there in the dishwashing room, and uh, some of them are probably even underneath the floorboards now. Uh, this is Paul. Paul is the last cook to will be working here. He, uh, he's the guy that's going to retire the joint. And uh, by the time we look at this film 20 years from now, he'll probably be a grandfather running a big lighting company. Could be your executive vice president. Oh, an executive vice president of the, uh, the joyous like. Uh, of course, Stephen will be the last daytime dishwasher here. Uh, in 20 years from now, by the time we uh, show this film, probably be the head of a trucking firm. <laughs> or, uh, or a, a, a chief plumber and an apprentice maintenance man in his own trucking firm. And his brother, Bruce, is also uh, the last of the nighttime dishwashers. And I must say, they get the award after all these years of being the best at what they do. So, uh, moving right along with sports, uh, this whole area here tomorrow uh, is coming out. All these walls, all these counters, the whole kitchen, the whole thing like that. And we're going to use all this p space for people to sit and to enjoy themselves. And we're going to make the kitchen a uh, much smaller kitchen. It's going to be located in that little funky prep room that you saw. And we're going to put out much lighter food in a much easier way. So here we are with a long look at the joint. I think very beautiful place, Joyous Lake. It's pleased a lot of people over a lot of years. And uh, like uh, my wife said earlier, it's the end of an era. Like my daughter said, it's an end of an era. And it is. Makes me sad to have to tear it apart and make it into a different place. But in another way, uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge of building a, another kind of place that uh, I hope the people of Woodstock and the people who come up to visit Woodstock are going to like. And uh, I think some a thing that will more be suitable for my life the way it is now, because when we opened up this place, it was just me and Valma. Now it's Valma, myself, uh, three little kids, and my big daughter, Valerie. 
and the situation uh, really doesn't call for me spending 20 hours a day here anymore and not seeing my wife and not seeing my children. The idea now is to devote the quality of my life and the quality of my time to raising my children, being a good husband, father, and, uh, and like friend to my family. I can't do that and run this place the way it is now, 20 hours. So hence, the end of an era and the ring of a new era and I hope that the uh, new lake, maybe Bart and I will get together uh, five, eight years from now, we'll tear it down, make it into a Volkswagen parking lot. Okay? Amen.